in your opinion, Richard, what happened to MH370? It was quite clearly um, diverted on purpose um, into the southern Indian Ocean. Um, a bit of a smoking gun that the captain had a home simulator, a Microsoft Flight Simulator, and he, he just used it to uh, fly Boeing 777 and other aircraft, um, different uh, airports and, and different challenges, um, like anybody with Microsoft Flight Simulator would. Um, but he did do one flight into the southern Indian Ocean until fuel exhaustion. And that's not a typical kind of uh, flight. You normally try and, I know, land on an aircraft carrier or, or land in some very difficult airport in the mountains somewhere. Um, you don't normally fly into the middle of the ocean uh, to fuel exhaustion and to see what happens. So this attracted quite a bit of attention. Um, and the simulator run was deleted, um, but the FBI uh, helped to recover the data um, from a, uh, a hard disk that was uh, detached, an external hard disk that was detached from this flight simulator, but that was found in his house. Um, and I think uh, uh, it raises quite a few questions of why um, the captain should have simulated uh, such a a flight into the southern Indian Ocean to no nowhere near any airport, any land, um, and well out of reach uh, of uh, of the rest of civilization, frankly. Uh, and I th I think you've probably heard it many times. Is it, these things create more questions? then they give answers because um, this, I, I said, well, I said, in your opinion, what, what's happened now, your opinion's backed by a lot of data. And this is, this is huge. That particular um, bit of data that, that shows the, the flight crew, the captain had simulated this exact uh, scenario is quite damning, really damning evidence. But why the, the questions it raises is why would you do that? That that would suggest potentially a suicide mission. If that is the case, why would you go to those lengths? Um, if you're in control of the aircraft, why fly to fuel exhaustion? Why not do something earlier? Um, it is very it's very strange. Um, yeah. It is indeed very strange. Um, I think one aspect is uh, it doesn't make sense because all reports are the captain was a happy guy. He was uh, obviously well respected by his colleagues. Um, he didn't appear to be suffering from depression or he wasn't in financial problems. Um, so it, it doesn't add up to a picture of someone wanting to deliberately hijack his own aircraft and deliberately fly it uh, on a murder-suicide uh, mission. Um, so that is one set of questions. Another, as you point out, why fly seven hours, 37 minutes. If you want to commit suicide, you can do it, um, you know, in 30 minutes uh, earlier in the flight. You don't have to wait another seven hours uh, uh, to commit suicide. Um, one thing that's been put forward by some analysts is he w wanted to, to cover his tracks. He didn't want to be uh, found out. He didn't want the aircraft to be found and he didn't want it all to come out of who, uh, what, why. And 
for 10 years, he's been successful. We haven't found the aircraft and we haven't answered the questions of why uh, he would have diverted the aircraft in, into the southern Indian Ocean. I, I think anyone, anyone listening will also be going, going off in their own little direction here. And obviously it's important to mention that from both our positions, um, we're just speculating. So uh, I am, there's no accusation that this is what actually happened. It's, it's theory, but it's, it's so, it's so specific and also peculiar. Um, where even where we've just suggested that he's been successful 10 years on, no one knows where this aircraft is. No one knows what's actually happened. That's so calculated than that, that, that also seems rather strange that, that someone could be that calculated in their decision making to pull something like this off and for the rest of us to be uh well in this situation where we we're still yet to uncover what happened or 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 recover the aircraft in indeed it is uh, very strange you're quite right um what we've just discussed is pure speculation it's not something that would stand up in a court of law. Uh, it would not uh, answer the questions in a legal sense. And there are a lot of compensation claims from bereaved families who lost uh, loved ones uh, on, on board. And it's important because... 10 million of us, more than 10 million of us, get on a plane every day. And the airline industry has a great track record for safety and solving reasons why any crash or uh, incident happens. There are fortunately very few relative to the number of aircraft flying every day around the world. And something like this has to be answered. We have to continue until we get the full facts uh, discovered. And it may take quite some time. Finding the wreckage would be very helpful. However, the Indian Ocean is a huge place and it's not trying to find a pin in a haystack. Uh, the, the pin could be in any one of several thousand haystacks, uh, in, to use that analogy. And we need to find the wreckage. That will help us learn a lot more about uh, what happened with the aircraft from the flight data recorder, maybe even from the cockpit voice recorder, which the, the flight data recorder will have all the data of the flight. The cockpit voice recorder will have the last two hours uh, of uh, anything that was spoken in the cockpit. Um, so, you know, even someone muttering their final prayers uh, would be picked up on the cockpit voice recorder. Uh, and we need to carry on. When we got the wreckage, the wreckage might tell us a few um, hints as to what happened. And until we solve this mystery, um, as I say, the largest loss of life from any aircraft missing, um, the families of, of those people who were lost won't have closure. They won't be able to let it rest. Um, so there are a lot of good reasons why we should carry on until we solve this mystery. 